as you know water is a universal solvent it dissolves large number of substances in it but the question arises can water uh, absorb any uh, can water dissolve any amount of a soluble substance uh, this we can uh, see by performing a very simple activity by taking a beaker and uh, some washing powder and water let us fill this beaker half with water and uh, add to it a teaspoon full of washing soda now you will see that if when you stir it with the help of a spoon the washing soda powder will dissolve washing powder will dissolve in water uh, once it has dissolved add another teaspoon full of washing powder and dissolve it with by stirring it if it dissolves then add one more teaspoon full now the solution which is capable of dissolving uh, more of uh, a soluble solid substance is called unsaturated solution unsaturated solution which can dissolve some more solid substance in it now what happens when you keep on adding teaspoonfuls of washing powder a stage comes when the washing powder starts settling down at the bottom like this some of the washing powder settles down means it does not dissolve now such type of solution is called saturated solution so a saturated solution is that solution which uh, cannot dissolve any more amount of a solid substance in it so this simple activity can show that a fixed uh, amount of water can dissolve a fixed amount of a solid substance in it it does not keep on uh, dissolving uh, any amount of a substance it does not it only can dissolve a fixed amount of a substance solid substance in water uh, water can dissolve only a fixed amount of uh, solid at a particular temperature temperature is equally important now the question arises uh, will the solubility of a solid in water will increase by increasing the temperature as uh, we have seen we can dissolve a solid substance easily by stirring we if you don't stir it it will take a lot of time in dissolving but if we stir it it the solid substance will dissolve rapidly in water now let us uh, continue this activity and heat this solution and now start adding some more of washing powder and it is observed that when this solution which is a saturated solution at room temperature when it is heated some more washing powder dissolves in it on heating showing thereby that solubility increases by rise in temperature so when some more solid dissolves on heating then it forms a super saturated solution when more of the solute can be dissolved in water on heating it forms a super saturated solution also i would like to tell you about the solute and solvent the solid substance which dissolves in a liquid is called solute the solute is in small amount and the liquid which dissolves the solid in it is called solvent solvent is in large amount so solute dissolves in solvent so the substance which is in less amount is solute and the substance which is in large amount is called solvent so now you know about three types of uh, solutions unsaturated solution saturated solution and super saturated solution so when we make a solution then a uh, temperature is very e important also if you dissolve a solid in solid form or you powder it now think which will dissolve faster a powder if the solid is in the powdered form powdered solid will dissolve faster so solubility will increase by these three factors you can see by stirring 
when the solid is in the powdered form and with the rise in temperature the solubility increases. Now another question arises, can water dissolve equal amount of different substances? Let us see this ourselves by performing activity, why, why to assume? We will not give any answer to it, when answer we will get by performing the activity, by taking different types of solids and dissolving them in equal amount of water, right. So, let us take these three samples, washing soda, washing powder, common salt and copper sulphate and uh, teaspoons are taken, teaspoon, three beakers are taken, filled with half with water and uh, the observations should be recorded. Now, to these three beakers, add teaspoonful of washing uh, soda to one beaker and one teaspoonful of uh, common, common salt to second beaker and one teaspoonful of copper sulphate to the third beaker and go on continuously adding and go on continuously stirring the solution. And you yourself can record the observation in which uh, uh, when the saturated solution is formed after how many, uh, how, after the addition of how many teaspoonfuls of each substance in same amount of water, the amount of water should be same, then only we can compare the solubility. Uh, the actual observation I am not writing that you can record yourself, but uh, the clear result is that water uh, does not uh, dissolve same amount of different solids same amount of water does not dissolve, same amount of uh, solid substances, in fact same amount of water will dissolve different amount of solids in it. Now, let us uh, see this, if you have to separate, if you are asked to separate a mixture of uh, sand and a common salt and water. Now, common salt will dissolve in water to form a brine solution, but sand will not dissolve from each other. Now, for this you can take the mixture in a beaker, allow it to stand for some times, what will happen? Sand will settle down and this sand which has settled down is called sediment, sedimentation occurs and the clear liquid because brine uh, or we can say common salt solution forms a clear solution. So, it will form the upper layer, it is called supernatant uh, liquid. So, by decanting, we can uh, carefully pour the supernatant liquid into another beaker or also another thing can be done, filtration can be done. So, by filtration or by sedimentation and decantation, we can uh, separate brine from sand and so sand is separated, now brine is left. Now, think we have already done this, how to separate salt from water by evaporation and sedimentation or distillation. So, by heating uh, brine solution, uh, water will change to water vapors which by condensation we can collect as water and common salt will be left behind after the evaporation of water. 